That's an in-house question for Christians. So if you're not a Christian, I would like you to just close your ears for a moment. Because discussing it has caused so much damage to the Christian cause that I wouldn't begin to describe it. I know of churches, many of them in the United States, where young people are told, you either believe the earth is 6,000 years old or you're not a Christian. And many of them are lost to science because of that. And many of them lose their Christian faith because of that. And I've met so many of those people that this question needs to be taken very seriously. And I do. And I want to say, ladies and gentlemen, that I'm convinced that it's very simple to say that the Bible says absolutely nothing about the age of the earth or the age of the universe, for that matter, which are not the same. Now, I say I was likely to shock you, but perhaps you're shock-proof. Let me now argue my case. The book of Genesis is one of the most fundamental, the most fundamental book in Scripture. And it starts, page one of Genesis has got a very interesting literary structure. It has got a couple of verses, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was out form and so on. And then there is a sequence of days. Do you remember that? And God said, let there be light, and there was light and so on. And there was evening and morning one day. And God said, and so on. And you will notice that each one of those days begins with the statement, and God said. Yes? That's obvious. But you will notice, won't you, that the book doesn't begin with, and God said. You ever notice that? The beginning of the book is not part of the first day, is it? That's the first thing to notice, just as a sheer literary thing. And I look at this, suppose I'd never seen it before. What could I deduce from it? Forget science, forget everything. Else. Just let's look at the text. It says there was a beginning, and then it says there was a sequence of days. Well, now we have to go into a bit of grammar. And I decided, to be fair, to consult, to consult the professor of Hebrew at Cambridge and the professor of Hebrew at Oxford. So I hope we get a fair view from those two gentlemen. What did they say to me? Well, they said to me what one of the leading Hebrew experts and a trained scientist who chaired the editorial board for the new international version of Scripture. There are different past tenses in Hebrew. And the first two verses are in one tense, and the sequence of days are in another tense. And if you ask what that means, the answer comes back. That the first two verses refer to a period of time antecedent to the sequence of days at an indefinite time beforehand. That's the end of the story as far as I'm concerned. Scripture says nothing about the age of the earth. And ironically, that is totally independent of what you think about the days. If you think that the days are 24-hour days of a single earth week, it still tells you nothing about the age of the earth. And if you think they're long periods of time or whatever, it still takes you, tells you nothing about the age of the earth. And you will notice, of course, that the New Testament doesn't mention these days anyway. I believe they're very important. So important, and I'm now going to do a bit of very shameless advertising, I've written a book about them. <laughs> and it's called Seven Days That Divide the World. So what I want to say is, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you this, you Christians, in case you misunderstand me, I am fully convinced of the inspiration and authority of all of Scripture. But we don't defend Scripture by going beyond what it claims. We're likely to do it damage. And when I meet people who have accepted a version of Scripture that has turned them off Christianity, and it seems not to be central, like the resurrection and so on. And might I just say, I don't mind being ridiculed for my faith in Christ. 
I have been ridiculed at the highest level for my belief in the resurrection. So my attitude to Genesis is not because I'm embarrassed by it, but because I believe what it says. But I hope I'm humble enough to realize that what it says and what it means, and my interpretation of it may be different things. So it seems to me to be very important not to go beyond Scripture and not to go less than Scripture. Of course, there is the matter of the days, and that's fascinating. But then you didn't ask about that, so I'll go to... <laughs>